Anyway, we're going to watch some stuff about this missing Titanic submarine, which is what they're calling it. The Titanic tour submarine is more accurate. Um, I've read and watched a few different things about this, but we're going to see what these videos have to say. The public affairs officer for the First Coast Guard District in Boston, Massachusetts. In just a minute, I'll introduce Rear Admiral John Mauger, commander of the First Coast Guard District. We're prepared to give you a brief, uh, a brief update on the case going on 900 miles east of Cape Cod. Oh, Jesus Christ. For five submariners. I would. We do ask, uh, following his brief statement, we'll be able to take some, a uh, few questions and answers. We do ask that we give everybody the opportunity to ask one question, and if we have it to go through, we can be able to ask further questions beyond that. We only have time, let's say, for about 10 minutes. Um, so he has a brief statement on here, and at this time, I'd like to introduce Admiral John Mauger. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rear Admiral John Mauger. I'm the commander of the 1st Coast Guard District here in Boston, Massachusetts. And in this case, I am the lead for the Coast Guard search and rescue operations uh, for uh, the overdue submersible out near uh, the wreck of the Titanic. Yesterday afternoon, uh, we were notified by the operator of the submersible vessel that it was uh, overdue and it had five uh, persons on board uh, the submersible. So we're working very closely at this point uh, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do uh, to locate uh, the submersible and rescue uh, those on board. Our thoughts are with uh, the crew members and the families uh, on board, uh, of those on board the submersible at this time, and we are doing everything that we can do uh, to make sure that uh, we can uh, locate uh, and rescue uh, those on board. Now I'm going to point out, I feel, uh, I feel bad for the families of the people who were on board, but not necessarily the people who were on board. And the reason for this is actually just quite simple. So the dude who did this whole fucking thing, right? Um, Titan submersible. Is it? It's Ocean something is who made it, right? Ocean Gate, something like that. Uh, I believe it is Ocean Gate Submarine Owner Statements. Let's see if I can find these. I don't know if I can. So you sued a couple months before the Titanic submarine. I can talk about that because I've, I read that I, or I watched a thing about it. I'm fairly, I, I have some knowledge there. Five people missing. Expedition CEO is on their missing list. Missing tour submarine disappeared. All right. So it's just, I, I could find it. I just don't want to waste a bunch of time looking for it. The thing is... This guy made it a point that he wanted specific people, specific age brackets, and specific uh, demographics to be the crew. He didn't want to have people who were just, you know, ex-military and white, I believe, were things he specifically pointed out to be the crew on his submarine. Now, the reason that that's important to understand is because the only place in the world you're really gonna find people who have a high number, like a high level and understanding of submarines, the way they operate, the way that you should operate them, and the way you would have to maneuver them, etc., are gonna come from the military. He doesn't want them on his submarine. Then he also doesn't care if you are the top qualified non-military person in the world. He doesn't want you there if you're white because he needs more people of minority demographics to give them an opportunity and people who are in their early 20s. That way it's people who are, you know, not experienced in anything because they've just obtained the point, like they've just reached the point in life where they start gaining that experience in stuff. And that was his statement on who he wanted to have 
running his submarine. I don't know what else to tell you about that other than it makes me feel like the people on it were extremely arrogant and naive in their thinking that they were going to do so well with this. And this guy misled them. This dude also just, uh, we'll get into it later. So after receiving the call, uh, we uh, launched, uh, well, reached out to uh, the vessel Polar Prince and began a surface search uh, looking for uh, the submersible. At the same time, uh, we launched a C-130 uh, aircraft to search, to conduct an aerial search, uh, both visual and radar of uh, the scene. We've subsequently... Uh... All that the C-130 is going to be able to do is spot if it's come back up to the surface. If this thing's actually just being thrown around by deep sea currents in the ocean, or like let's say that the water pressure because you have to understand water pressure when you're going under the ocean is something like a thousand times more dense and compacting than atmospheric pressure because the molecules of water are so much more dense and together than gaseous molecules in the air. So they're, this thing is being crushed and they may lose the ability for like an onboard computer that's monitoring their depth and position through sonar and everything that could all just end up being useless and shutting down and causing an extremely dangerous scenario very easily and something that I have seen being missed is the scrubbers in a submarine you have to use scrubbers because you're breathing air so you need to scrub the carbon monoxide out of the air otherwise you're just pumping oxygen into a carbon monoxide rich environment like it's not it doesn't help you out you need both things you need to one scrub out the co2 and you need to two produce oxygen or introduce oxygen and from what i saw from something i was reading on my phone earlier today that uh their CO2 scrubbers are expected to fail before they run out of air. So they don't, they didn't equip very well. And they would have to have some way for them to get back to the surface that's on its own system, its own circuitry, its own setup in case everything else failed, which is why you would want to isolate it to send them back to the surface. When I see, uh, see any way for them to have any appropriately sized scrubber, yeah, that was that was pretty much what I saw, was they don't have an appropriate size scrubber, and the scrubber that they have is not up to par, that it is a very below par what they would want to have, and it is not going to last long enough. So yeah, that's that's the problem, and then they should have also an isolated safety system that would release, say, like buoys to help lift it back to the surface if something were to go wrong that they would have to manually actuate or that it's on its own system to pop open uh, panels to release them from or something. And, like, there's precedent for that to happen. James Cameron, when he was filming the Titanic or shortly after it, when he was going for, like, a, the, a record, basically, on being in a manned submersible craft and he was the only one on it he had a bunch of electrical and computer issues take place he was going down to like 26,000 feet or something like that and he ended up with all these issues taking place everything was shutting down his lights were gone his computers were gone he had no altimeter to tell him his depth anymore all of these things were failed and the only reason that James Cameron lived is because he insisted that they have a backup system to get him to the surface on its own circuits. So when everything else shut down, which was literally just because it overloaded the computer system, trying to do like a touch screen screen grab for everything he was messing with so that people could see how you would do this, that overloaded the computer system because it just kept having to run this program too much and it made everything shut down. And having this one thing on its own circuit 
so that he could say, oh, this is a bad situation and hit the button and get lifted to the surface is the only reason James Cameron came out of that alive, which is the prime example of what this group I don't think did because nobody on his team is knowledgeable or experienced because he wanted young people who have no experience, who could not be white, and could not have military experience. So by eliminating the military experience, you've literally eliminated everybody who has the most knowledge and experience on a submarine in the world. It's a dumb move, and it's extremely arrogant. And the guy who ran it has also said that this thing is unsinkable. The irony of saying that your submarine is unsinkable when you're going to look at a sunken ship that was touted and marketed as being unsinkable is astounding to me. Coordinated with uh, the Canadian uh, Coast Guard and Canadian Armed Forces to deploy additional assets uh, to the scene. The Canadians have had a C-130 aircraft searching as well. In it's addition only, to the C-130s are only going to see the surface. They might be able to penetrate through the surface a little bit, but not enough to find the submarine. The C-130s are not finding a submarine in the ocean. It is that simple. They are not going to be doing it. Also having a P-8 uh, submarine uh, search uh, aircraft uh, deploy as well and put uh, sonar buoys in the water uh, in attempt to uh, listen. This, uh, the location of the search is approximately 900 miles uh, east of Cape Cod. Uh, in a water depth of uh, roughly 13,000 feet. It is a uh, remote area, uh, and it is uh, a challenge to conduct a uh, search in that remote area, but we are deploying all available assets to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we can uh, locate uh, the craft and uh, uh, rescue uh, the, the people on board. Going into uh, this evening, we will continue to uh, fly aircraft and move additional uh, vessels into uh, the area. Uh, in this remote part of our uh, search and rescue responsibility, oftentimes we rely on commercial operators to be the first vessels yep. uh, on scene. And so we've been in touch with additional commercial vessels that are operating in the area, as well as uh, initiating uh, the movement of additional Canadian Coast Guard assets uh, and U.S. Coast Guard uh, surface asset uh, into the area over the course of the next couple of days. I think it's important to point out the fact that they rely heavily on commercial vessels to help with this and be the first ones on scene. Because people are going to complain about this. Well, they're the Coast Guard. They're supposed to be there. Mobile. Like, there's way too much ocean to expect just one organization to be able to monitor, cover, and be the first ones there. There's just simply way too much of it. So, of course, you're going to expect commercial sh vessels to be the first ones on site. There are more commercial vessels than there are military, Navy, or Coast Guard vessels. So that's, it's simply the way you're going to expect things to happen. And typically, people who are on these ships want to be there and help out because they understand the rigors and the danger of the ocean as they're on it all the time. So they want to build up that karma of helping out and that culture of being there for each other when you're able to and needed. Because it could be them one day. Also... I don't think they're going to say anything about this, but I did see that France is going to also be out and helping out. I believe today they're supposed to be there to help out. Um, but they also only had 40 hours of oxygen. And I don't know how long they're actually expecting the scrubbers to work and last. But like I said, not as long as the 40 hours of oxygen. So there is that. And uh, I did also see something about the the submersible that they are in only actually being rated or certified to go down to maybe 150 to 200 feet of depth and they were going way the fuck further than that so um yeah that's not good also because of the way that submarines work and i saw a video they had on this submersible specifically before it launched that it was 
Oh my god. So this thing... Normally you need people from outside to be able to help let you out anyways because you can't physically push it. You'd, you'd have to be the fucking Hulk to push open the door because of all the pressure from the ocean pressing in on all sides of your vessel. So you're not physically going to be capable of opening it in an emergency to get out. You need external help to do so. But for them to get out of this thing at all, they need external help. So if they don't get found probably today, they're probably dead. And that's just kind of the way that one's going to roll. They're supposed to be running out of oxygen tomorrow at 7 a.m. now. I mean, that's all... That sucks. It's also just, that's our estimate. You know what I mean? Because are they panicking? Are they talking? Are they trying to sing to each other? Are they yelling at each other because they're panicking? Are they, like, is that scrubber cleaning up any of the CO2 anymore? Or is that gone? Because then they're going to have carbon monoxide poisoning, and it's not going to matter if they run out of air. Um if like the things that they're doing and the way that they're responding are going to dictate how fast they run out of oxygen are they doing things to conserve oxygen so that they lower their heart rate and they're breathing less they're talking less so they're using less air or are they are they at each other's throats because like i said he specifically wanted his crew to be a crew of young people with no experience so I'd assume everybody's just panicking, which is not going to help, which is why I said I feel really sorry for their families, but I, I, I can't bring myself to feel too sorry for them because they all went in there very arrogantly thinking, ah, oh, this thing's unsinkable. We're going to do something great. We're going to do that. And I kudos to you for the, the, the bravery and the gumption to want to set this like milestone of just being able to take tourists down to see the Titanic, but um, tourists are only allowed to go something like 150 to 200 feet in depth anyway. So you're, you've already gone beyond what's supposed to happen, and you've exceeded the limits of what your vessel's capable of. You didn't care to manage your vessel for the safety of the people on board by ensuring you have the most capable and knowledgeable people on board. You instead set stupid criteria that has no relevance to anything and everybody on board accepted these risks. Like, it's a shitty situation and I feel really bad for their families. These are five families that are going to lose a loved one. I really don't think they're going to find this submarine. I just don't. The odds of you finding the submarine are so small. And there were so many things, like the fact that the scrubbers, they don't have enough space for an adequate scrubber. The fact that they, when he's talking about the vessel, he's pointing out stuff that they got at like an Ace Hardware or something that's in there, and it's just like piping for something. Like, it seems like they just threw this thing together and hoped for the best in a way that is extremely egotistical and arrogant and I just I don't think they're going to find it you're looking for it's not even the size of a normal submarine right you've only got enough space for five people it's not big it's very small it's in the depths of the ocean which we cannot physically explore as human beings we don't have the technological capability to do so without it crushing the things we send down so and if it got caught up in a deep sea current and it, like let's say it lost its its ability to control its rudder and its movement and now it's just floating around on deep sea currents what if it gets thrown into really like the ocean floor in the bottom of a huge crevice down there and it just crushes the thing it's entirely possible. I really just, I have no hope that they find this thing. And if they do, I will be absolutely astonished. Uh, adding to the complexity of this case is uh, the fact that uh, this was a uh, submersible vessel. And so we need to make sure that we're looking both on the surface uh, for uh, 
the vessel, if it had surfaced back to the water, but it somehow lost communications with the vessel, and that's what the aircraft and the surface search vessel is allowing us to do right now. But we're also having to search in the water column, and we're doing that right now with the use of sonar buoys and sonar on the ship that's out there to listen for any sounds that we can detect in the water column. Now, I don't know how these sonar buoys work, since I wasn't in the Navy or the Coast Guard or anything that uses those. However, I hope that any ship in the area that has a sonar system is capable of tapping into these buoy signals to help monitor what they're getting off the sonar in order so that they have as many eyes on these sonar readings as possible to pick up any kind of anomaly to maybe find these fucking people. Like, I hope they get found. I just, I think that the odds of them being found is like one in a trillion. I just, I really don't think it's going to happen. I hope they do. I just don't think it will. The odds are so massively against it. Like, it's really just a shitty situation, and I'm happy it's only five people, and it's not a Titanic full of people, because that would be much worse. Let's just leave it at that. Over the course of the next couple of days, uh, we anticipate adding additional capability uh, to conduct um, additional uh, search in the water as uh, like France those, being there uh, now. commercial assets uh, arrive on scene. Again, uh, our thoughts are with uh, the families uh, and the crew members uh, on board the submersible. And uh, we're working very closely with uh, all U.S. Uh, and international partners uh, to um, provide any capability that we can provide uh, to search uh, for uh, the, the overdue vessel and uh, rescue uh, the crew members on board. Yeah. At this point, uh, we'll take uh, questions. There was one that said that So, in terms of uh, locating the overdue submersible, we have to make sure that we're looking on both uh, the surface using aerial and, and uh, surface vessels, but then expanding into underwater uh, search as well. Right now, our capability is limited to uh, sonar buoys and listening for sounds, um, but uh, you know we're working very hard to uh, increase the capability. We understand from the operator of the vessel that the vessel uh, was designed with a 96-hour uh, 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 sustainment uh, capability if there was an emergency on board. Okay, so more than twice as much as what I had read last night. What I read last night said 40 hours of oxygen, and now they've been told 96. The fact that there has been so much about this that seems to be contradictory and ever-changing makes my thought of them being found worse. I think that this thing was completely thrown together in a haphazard way with people funding it because there's money in being able to take people down in a submersible to see the Titanic on the ocean floor. You could make a lot of money with it. The thing is, investors want to see returns. And he may have rushed this so that he could get his investors off his ass and create this problem. And it's just... This is why you don't want to be one of the first people to do something like this. This is why you don't want to be one of the first people on a commercial rocket into space, okay? this is These are the reasons that you want to let people figure shit out for you, all right? You let these people go get the Darwin Award, and then you come through later and reap the reward that they paid the sacrifice to have because um, I'm going to tell you right now, I had two books for my airplane that was flying around since Vietnam is a variation of a C-130. And in Vietnam, the book for my plane, front to back, about that big. When I got there in 2010, yeah, it was January 2010 when I started training for the plane, and it was June, I believe, when I finished training, I had two binders that constituted the exact same book but it had been two binders that were books this fucking thick now. So the whole thing now is this big. 
Like, you can't, I can't even get it all in the front. It was this big all of a sudden. It was from my top of my head to the middle of my chest, roughly, for two books. Now, the thing is, you're not going to have this happen. The, the reason that book was so big was because of lessons learned through the people that it had gotten shot down, the malfunctions in the system that caused us to lose crew members or aircraft or damage the aircraft. We learned all these risks over time by utilizing the airplane. And it made the book exponentially larger than it was initially. These people haven't had the time for that. It had to be... Yeah, exactly. They didn't even change the fact that it was made out of multiple materials, which is a huge... Oh, yeah. You can't do that. Because then you have different portions of it are going to take the stress of all the pressure differently. Some of it might bend and some of it might crack. Some of it might fluctuate. Some of it might not. Some of it might... And since it's different materials and you're going under the ocean, it's going to get colder. What happens when things get cold? They contract. If you have different materials, they're going to contract at different rates of speed, which is going to create flaws and fissure, which means that this thing's probably just sunk. That's terrifying. Do the difference in how the material expands. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's just... That is wonky. It's absolutely wonky. And, it, like, the thing is, is it wasn't necessarily rushed. We'll see if I didn't shut this. I'll pull this up. So this, claiming fraud months before the Titanic submarine went missing, basically, since 2018, this people had gone through and spent money to be on this trip. And they ended up spending roughly a quarter million dollars for two people to be on this trip. Uh, back in 2016, they started paying for this thing, and it was supposed to be in payments. There were installments over time into they get to be on the thing. And it just it didn't ever come into fruition. They backed out and asked for their money back, and they just we're told basically you're not going to get your money back and then they opened up a lawsuit to get back their money as well as damages and false representation because of the fact that this thing was clearly still not in a state to be sent out when they opened up the case and said they wanted their money back because they'd been making payments of tens of thousands of dollars since 2016. So it's... It's rushed, but the thing is, like, to what extent? Because you'd been working on this thing for almost a decade, right? 2016 to today, that's seven years. And you still don't have just one cohesive material you've made this out of. You still have portions of it that you're like, yeah, we just took this by taking things from Ace Hardware or Home Depot and Harbor Freight and slapping it together in a way that works. Yeah, a way that works above the fucking ocean. Holy shit. This is why he wanted an inexperienced crew. Experienced crew would have been like, yeah, this is, I don't like this. This whole thing is problematic and not good. This spells disaster and it needs to be reworked. Of course he didn't want people with experience. He took advantage of these people's ignorance and naivete and just their, their overall lack of knowledge, I think. Uh, and so uh, we're using that time, making the best use of every moment of that time to uh, locate the vessel. Sir, can you talk about who was on board exactly? Is there somebody named Hamish Hart, a British explorer, who confirmed that he's on board the identity? At this point, I'm not in a position to uh, confirm the identity of anybody uh, on board. Uh, yeah, it's the not his job. Um, he shouldn't of, be doing uh, respect that. for the families. We're uh, you know, going through the notification process, uh, and more updates will be uh, forthcoming. Sir, maybe you can tell me something there, but it seems like that vessel will be sitting on the bottom and you have a 96 hour window in the region. This is a race to get some sort of rescue vehicle down to it. Am I correct about that? That's absolutely part of the overall planning for uh, this search case. Right now we're focused on locating the vessel, but at the same time, if we find this vessel uh, in the water, then we will have to uh, effect some sort of rescue or coordinating, uh, reaching out to uh, different uh, partners within the U.S. Uh, Navy 
within the Canadian armed forces and within private industry to understand what underwater rescue capability might be available. Are there any vessels on the way there that could do that, that could get down there? So at this moment, we're focused on the search and understanding the capabilities of the vessels that are deploying to the scene. And do you still have measure at sea before the shutdown? So the sonar capabilities within the sonar buoys and within the hull of the commercial vessel that is out there operating on site, those aren't Coast Guard sonars, they are capable. So since those are not Coast Guard sonars, they may actually be very capable of having as many people tap into them as possible to watch it. If there was Coast Guard, it might have more secure systems so that they can't be hacked into or something. So I just wanted to pull this up. So you see all these like neon green color going on in some of these pictures. Some of this is just here's the ink. This is the capsules that these things look like for you as a parachuter or a scuba diver or something of that nature. So when you're lost at sea, if you were like in an airplane crash or something in the ocean and you got onto one of the life rafts, they should have these die marker things like this so that you can make this huge neon green patch of ocean. And that's what the C-130s basically are going to be looking for. They pretty much are not going to see a little submersible that's floating on the ocean surface. Um, like you got to think something like this, and they're flying like 10,000 feet, like 5 to 20,000 feet really above you. Then the, they're just not going to see it. You need something like this to make yourself more visible. And I really fucking hope that they had the, the knowledge base to put this stuff on the outside of the submarine in a way that's automatically deployed in the event of an emergency because of the fact that they cannot get out of the submersible without external help. They cannot get out. That means even if they're on the surface, but they do not get found before they run out of air, they will suffocate. It's a terrible design decision. So hopefully they have this so that they can be visible and be found because that's a terrifying prospect. Of listening uh, to a depth of uh, 13,000 feet, as I understand. So, uh, in terms of uh, the square mileage of the search, I don't have that. And granted, with how much things have changed, I hope that the report that they have to be let out of this thing by people who are external of it was also the dude who made it not knowing what the hell he's talking about because that would be terrible. That would literally be one of the worst possible design decisions they could have made. I feel like the pack is inside also bolted. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Because, like I said, they should have, like, uh, some inflatable buoys, essentially, that would come out to lift them that's on its own circuit. And I would also have these on, their, on like, the same circuit or on a different circuit to just eject them when you got to the surface so that you could be found. If you used that system to get yourself to the surface, I would have this set up as well. Like, but he also thought, he was saying that this thing's unsinkable. So did he even care to put in safety measures for a rescue or to make sure that it could get back to the surface in case of an emergency? Or did he just go in arrogantly thinking that it wasn't going to sink ever the same way that they did with the Titanic and not having enough lifeboats for everyone on board, which at the time wasn't standard, but because of the Titanic sinking, it is today. Today you will have enough lifeboats on every vessel to house everybody on the damn boat and it's because of the Titanic not having enough and the Titanic sinking and supposed to be unsinkable. Uh, the more I think about it, the worse it seems to me for these people to survive. I like From the moment I heard about this, I immediately just like, hmm, they're dead. And I've just accepted that they're dead. I, I have... I hope that I'm wrong, but I just really don't think that they're going to live.
that number uh, right at this moment, but it includes both a surface area that we're looking at and a subsurface area. And so we'll get you the, the exact number for uh, the square mileage of the search. In terms of the hours, uh, we understood that that was uh, 96 hours of uh, rescue uh, cap or emergency capability uh, from from the operator, and so uh, we anticipate that there's somewhere between uh, 70 to uh, the full 96 hours available at this point. So it's certainly uh, the purpose of the submarine was to, um, as I understand, the purpose of the submersible was to uh, provide uh, opportunity to visit the wreck site and explore the wreck site. Uh, so that's that's a possibility. Uh, again, right now our focus is getting on as much capability into uh, the area as we can and understanding that uh, full capability of those assets that are being deployed. Our uh, aerial assets. Uh, he needed to give them the Titanic experience. It went so far as to say the same crap. They're getting full, get, exactly they are, and it's that's why I feel like ah they I bet they didn't put in anything with that in mind for a recovery if something went wrong. And I'm just not going to be able to stress enough how much I hope that I'm wrong. But I would be willing to bet millions of dollars that I do not have and I probably will never make in my entire life that they don't live. I just, I do not see it happening. I don't see them coming back. And at least if we find it, I did. I see it being way past the time that we have to find them alive. It's just, it sucks, but what do you do? Assets that are being deployed have the capability to do both visual and radar searches, and, and the Canadian's uh, asset had the ability to drop sonar buoys and listen, and so we're using all that information to improve our search capability. So uh, we're, we're uh, working through that right now, um, but uh, what we're really focused on uh, at the moment is really locating the vessel, which could either be in the surface or subsurface. And so we're bringing in technical expertise to understand uh, both uh, the dynamics of underwater uh, search uh, and uh, underwater rescue uh, operations. I wish these people so, asking uh, questions as, had uh, mics. Search and rescue pro professionals, uh, you know, we work very, very hard, and, and our crews take this personally. Our first thoughts are with the uh, the crew members and the families of uh, those on board, and so we want to make sure that we have done absolutely everything that we can do to uh, locate. Uh, their family members and bring them home safe. And so they're first and foremost in our thoughts uh, every moment of uh, this uh, search operation. Yeah, of course. If they aren't, then you aren't doing your job as a search and rescue group. Uh, the worst part is the best view of everything is going to be on a tiny screen in the sub. They could have just YouTubed footage from their couch and basically seen it. Jesus Christ. If I'm not mistaken, every submersible we've ever sent down there that we've gotten all the footage from of the Titanic was all remote controlled. All of it. You're not going to see anything better than what they saw. You just wanted to be close to it, which is weird. I don't know why you want to be close to it. Like, do you really think that this thing, this thing, was going to be going into the Titanic and going through like the upper and lower decks of it and exploring the inside? No. No, the hell it's not. The The remote control ones did. It could. And you know what's stupid about this fucking guy? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where is it? 
So they they try to make it look cool by putting the like extensions on there so you have better control of the joysticks. But this is what it is. They're controlling the whole thing with a Logitech post market PlayStation slash Xbox controller. And it's such a piece of shit that nobody who plays video games buys this fucking controller because it's not reliable for video games. It doesn't maintain a signal. It doesn't give good feedback. It doesn't reliably read inputs that you're pressing buttons for. And this is what they used. This is the control that your parents buy, like that you would buy for your kid who has anger issues and he breaks the controller every week. So you just start getting him this controller because it's 15, 20 bucks instead of the controller that comes with the Xbox that costs like $70. Instead of getting one that works well and is reliable, you get this piece of shit because you know he's going to break it. That's what they're running this thing on. It's the dumbest shit in the world. Yeah, we don't send people down that far for safety. We also don't send them that far because uh, the things break. Like I was talking about James Cameron's effort to go down like 26,000 feet, and he did not make it. Uh, a game controller and Starlink for communication with the service, which was document. Oh my god. I didn't even know they were using Starlink. Are you kidding me? Oh, we're going to go under the ocean. Okay, how are you going to communicate with the surface? And, and like, use this Wi-Fi Bluetooth controller to control yourself. How are you going to do that? Oh, we're going to use Starlink. You mean, you mean Elon Musk's satellite internet? Yeah. Do you have any idea how signals work in the ocean? They fucking don't. They don't. That's why we can't use the C-130s to see you at the bottom of the ocean is because those signals don't fucking work. And you think it's going to work from space, but we can't do it from a few thousand feet up. We can't do it with a helicopter a couple hundred feet up. What the actual, oh my fucking God, I can't. These people literally just signed and like paid him to get them killed. That's what they did. They got scammed into paying this moron into just building a submarine from leftovers at Home Depot to go die next to the Titanic if the current doesn't take you somewhere else. That's basically what this endeavor was. This is holy shit. I feel like the people involved in this thing have zero knowledge of how anything fucking works. They're like, yeah, I have electricity. How did you do that? I plug it into the wall. That's where the electricity comes from. All right, Zoomer. Do, how did it get to your fucking wall? How did it get there? It came from a power plant that's probably burning coal or natural gas in order for you to have the electricity from your wall. It's not just coming from farts and imagination. Holy shit. How common are these threats to the Titanic in general? And how dangerous are they even without an emergency taking place? I don't have uh, any details on how often uh, folks uh, visit uh, the wreck site there at Titanic. Uh, nor you should clip that rant, by the way. Or uh, the, any specific comments on the dangers involved. Certainly, uh, every time uh, ships go to sea, they encounter uh, hazards and dangers. Uh, and so uh, having properly prepared vessels, properly prepared uh, crew members, uh, and uh, making sure that you practice emergency procedures, good, good uh, um, practical advice for anybody that goes to sea. So uh, at this point, I'm not going to uh, dis discuss any information uh, about the families and communications. Obviously. Uh, Why is it that the media always, always, always wants to know about the families? Oh, we're going to talk about the victims at the latest incident of people dying, regardless of how they did it. Is it from a shooting? Is it from a plane crash? Is it this submersible? Is it something like a train wreck? Did 
Did something fall off a train and pollute the water and people died? Well, we're going to talk about these families. Why in the fuck is it always, oh, we need to go harass these families? Shut up and let them mourn. Leave them the fuck alone. These people, thank God that this guy has the tenacity and the integrity to just tell you over and over again, we are not giving you any information about the families. Because holy shit, the last thing they need is reporters and just the general public harassing them while they're like, oh, fuck, I really hope they find my husband or my son or my daughter or my wife or my kid. And meanwhile, they're probably fucking dead. This is the last thing that they need is the media as well as the public all over their shit. Uh, and so we'll, we'll provide that Jesus. Uh, with uh, future updates. So uh, the Coast Guard has uh, two uh, C-130 aircraft uh, in addition to the command team that's uh, working here. We have two C-130 aircraft uh, deployed. The Canadians have a C-130 aircraft and a P-8 aircraft. Uh, we also have access... The P-8 aircraft is a... Uh, the U.S. Navy uses these vest these aircraft as well. It's, it's another cargo aircraft. And, and uh, we'll launch this evening a uh, C-130 aircraft... If it's the one New I'm York thinking of, I'll double National check. Guard, uh, ...to make sure that we have uh, air assets, sufficient air assets up there. On the surface, we have the uh, commercial operator that's been uh, on site, uh, and we're bringing additional uh, surface search assets into play, which will also bring in some subsurface uh, search capability. Last question, please. It is. It's exactly what I was saying. So this is the P-8 that he's talking about. This is the P-8 aircraft. It's just it's another cargo aircraft, essentially, like the C-130, except it's more elongated, less designed for cargo than the C-130 is easy on off cargo thing. And it's more for just Navy use. The Air Force doesn't use this, but that's, they've got one of these out there as well. It's got a lot of good capability of trying to locate something on the surface of the ocean. But once again, I hope they're using that die so we can find it. I understand from the operator that there was one uh, pilot or uh, submersible uh, commander operator on board and that there were four uh, mission specialists uh, on board is the term that the uh, operator uses for them. So five, five total. You have to ask the operator what that means. What, what we're focused on is finding those five people. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, the Slide into excitement. The specifics of who these five people are do not matter to the Coast Guard. It is five souls, and they are trying to save those five souls. That's it. That's the goal. It doesn't matter what race they are, what nation they're from, what religion they have, what demographic they are, how they identify. None of it matters. It is five souls lost at sea, and their job is to find them, hopefully alive. That's the focus. They don't need to worry about the rest of it. It doesn't matter. Why would they waste time they could spend searching instead worrying about this bullshit that doesn't matter? details tonight on that missing Titanic submersible. Despite a broadened search today, still no visible sign of the vessel, but there are reports of sounds detected as an expert we spoke to says that window of opportunity. Okay, so this was from 14 hours ago. Come on, taskbar. I just want to make sure that uh, I can tell you roughly when this was. This would be, what, 14? So about 1.30 the, this morning. 1.30 a.m. Eastern Time is when this video was uploaded from Fox LA. So. The is quickly closing. No, I believe at best we have 25 hours. And actually, since this is L.A., they did this at about 1 in the morning Eastern Time. It's 10 Pacific, clearly, right here. So you're looking at noon Central for those of you here in the U.S. Of opportunity is quickly closing. No, I believe at best we have 25 hours left. Butch Hendrick has performed surface and subsurface water rescues for more than 30 years. The Tuesday night, the founder of this New York-based public safety dive training company told Fox 11 he believes the missing submersible is either tangled in the Titanic wreckage. Because the debris that is around the Titanic is so intense 
to get entangled is quite easy. Or the 21-foot vessel carrying one pilot and four passengers is the victim of a leak. And very quietly and slowly flooded inside. Hendricks says best case scenario is the sub known as the Titan is entangled, but even then, that comes with its own challenges. Yeah, it does. They did say they'd heard some noises. Now, here's the thing is what noises exactly? Or is it coming from the submersible? Is it just the sonar pinging off of other sonars because they're using all these sonar buoys? So they might just be picking up the noise from the other sonars that are also searching. Um, hopefully, it is the submersible. And hopefully it's just tangled and they're able to get like a remote sub down there to, to free it somehow and uh, and resolve it. That would be fantastic because if the thing is, is if they've got water coming in and their or systems shut down because of the pressure crushing things and they're at the mercy of the ocean, Mother Nature does not give a single fuck about you. It doesn't. And it will destroy you mercilessly and without any remorse. And that, that is what I fear has taken place here. It's good news because it would be easier to find. It may not be good news based on the fact that we have to figure out how we would untangle it. As of Tuesday morning, the United States Coast Guard said a total of 10,000 square miles had been searched off the coast of Cape Cod. It's a challenging operation. The submersible lost communication less than two hours into its Sunday journey to the Titanic, about 13,000 feet below. They lost communication immediately. Now, if it were me, and I were the pilot, I'd be like, hey, no comms, we're surfacing. Tough shit. Because that's your lifeline. So, what happened? Because at two hours, they probably weren't even at depth to even be next to the, the Titanic yet. So, what happened? Rolling Stone reporting an aircraft heard banging sounds at 30-minute intervals from the area where the sub disappeared during Tuesday's search, but still no sign of the sub. There's truly nothing else like it. Meanwhile, a promotional video produced by... I'm just trying to wrap my mind around how an aircraft would have heard it. Hours after they lost contact with the submersible, they heard banging from an aircraft. Like, How? Did they already have sonar out there trying to figure out where this thing was and the, the aircraft through their radio system was tapped into the sonar? Because otherwise, I don't know how the fuck they were doing it unless Navy aircraft like that P-8 has some sort of capability with the ocean that I'm just not aware of. Because that's... And I've never seen or heard... like the it, I don't know of anybody that I flew with or the people that I trained with all the way up that had been on multiple airframes or that were on different airframes from me that were just part of teaching other people aviation in their respective aircraft and crew position when I was going through all my training. I never heard about tying into a sonar system from anybody. That doesn't mean it's not something we can't do. I, uh, I could see us very easily being able to do it, especially with modern technology and me being out of the military for almost a decade now. I could definitely see us being able to do it. It's just I've never heard of the aircraft being tapped into sonar. Sonar would definitely be the first thing you would send out because that's it's the only thing you can really use to try and find them. But you're looking for a needle in a haystack, which is why, like, it's why I'm so negative about this and them being found. You're, you're literally looking for a rock in the ocean. Good luck. By submersible operator, Ocean Gate touts the Titanic expedition as a once-in-a-lifetime journey. While this clip of the CEO, Stockton Rush, seems to indicate the sub is run by a video... See? See? There's the damn controller. Ah! Oh, I guess this is the monitor they would have been looking at, right? Oh my god. They were sponsored by Logitech. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I can't. Game controller. 
It's basically a Sony PlayStation style controller. Tuesday, Ocean Gate confirmed Rush is the expedition pilot and his passengers include a British billionaire, a French mariner, and members of a prominent Pakistani business family. Hendrick believes if the sub is intact, it will run out of oxygen by Wednesday night. It's possible that the 96 hours was never tested. Mm. That nobody ever actually put five people in this submersible and then said, how long can we last? And like I said, under these circumstances, what are they doing? Because if they're panicking, their heart rate's up, you're breathing heavier, you're reducing the oxygen time frame. Like you're, you're sucking out the air that you had available. You're utilizing it at a much faster rate of speed. Now, initially, officials said the sub had 96 hours of oxygen, but you just heard Hendrick and his doubts that that was ever tested with five people on board. <laughs> Okay, that was just the end of it, and that's our next video. So, these <clears throat> Jesus. Well, we're not watching your ads again, okay? We already watched your ads in, in the videos. So, that's kind of the situation with the submersible. And they're, they're in their last, basically, their last few hours, really. If they have the whole 96 hours and it's supposed to last until 7, assuming that they're not panicking and using all the air and that they're the math, because them saying 96 hours is all just mathematics, if they didn't test it, which I'm sure that that guy was right and they didn't test it, um, because it, they didn't test anything, let's be honest. Um, at least it sure doesn't appear so as, as if they did. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where they're at with it. And, uh, it's 3.30 Eastern now, so they have about 16, 15 and a half hours of uh, oxygen. About 15 and a half hours of oxygen right now. So, And that's assuming everything's correct. They're not utilizing more oxygen than they should be because they're panicking and arguing about what to do to survive. They aren't uh, wasting air in that way they're doing everything they can to conserve the air as long as they possibly can and that the scrubber is going to hold out and do its job sufficiently for them to not uh not just have carbon monoxide poisoning because that's a very real threat for them at this point so hopefully hopefully they get found but i don't think they will and I kind of take it a little personally. Granted, I didn't, like I said, I didn't do any of this working with uh, the ocean, Navy, and submarines. But I was close air support. It was my job to get people out alive. I understand the, like, ah, oh, shit, we need to get them out. I went on several missions that were to find people that were hostages and to rest, like, hostage rescue missions. I wasn't part of having to locate where they were, obviously. But I was part of the recovery. And I understand the stress of being on that team. I just hope that they are all able to compartmentalize the fact that you can save people from a shitty situation, but you cannot save them from themselves. And that's why I'm so hard about this being something that's just unavoidable. And that that dude's a fucking idiot. Is because of the fact that he, he literally created a situation where we would have had to have saved him from himself as well as everybody else from him. And I can save you from a lot of shit, but I cannot save you from yourself. You just simply can't. So, hopefully they get found. But I don't think they will. You're literally searching for a rock floating around in the ocean. Maybe floating around in the ocean. Maybe just kind of chilling out next to the Titanic and lost forever. And if not, we'll just play a different game. That's fine.
Ooh. I've literally had the same ones every time. I've pretty much gotten Halls of Infusion and Oldemon every time. Oh, free 